Miriam, what has it meant to you to be part of the life of the Centre of Theological Inquiry over the last several years as a member? Well, I, I don't think that we could have done the work we were doing in any other place. Um, the Center for Theological Inquiry has as its mission, of course, theological inquiry, and that's what we were missing from our international law uh, discussions. We didn't have that rich theological piece that we had pushed out, so we could find that here. But CTI was also open to those of us who are not theologians, who were interested in theological inquiry but didn't have their credentials to be theologians, and we couldn't participate in other places that might have had a contribution on theology. Um, We've also found it to be, it's a, it's a place where there's a very high level of discussion. The visitors here who we've met on our regular visits, and they've been a changing group, um, have been wonderful conversation partners in the hallway at various receptions. And you yourself and your staff have been so warm and welcoming to us, giving us a space without the kind of constraints that so often happen in these kind of academic settings where we could freely think engage with each other and see where the conversation led us and it led us to very rich places and, and it's been a, I, I can't really think of another place where we could have had those elements of, of conversation partners of welcoming atmosphere and of mission that could support what we were doing when you go back uh, to Notre Dame and to the wider international academic international legal community what will you carry forward from these conversations and from this time at CDI? Well, uh, certainly um, um, to my fellow Christians, I'll bring the message that we can be a lot, we, we need to be, we're called to be witnesses to our faith as it is working in life, in law, in international law, and that um, it's time now it, for, for the United States, but for the world, for Christians to be better carriers of the message of what inter of Christianity offers to international law. So that's one thing to my uh, colleagues at, at Notre Dame and in international law who are Christian. And then for international lawyers more generally, I will seek to express to them the uh, what I think we have lost in international law by not being open to these other ways of knowing, not just from Christians but from other peoples of faith and remind my colleagues that these religious views have always been part of people's understanding and they have contributed in various ways to the international law we have today. And that maybe by cutting off those resources, we've gotten to this impoverished international law that couldn't stop this torture scandal, couldn't stop unlawful uses of force. Um, and perhaps, and this is no guarantee of course, but I think it's a fruitful way to go forward CTI, my conversations here have encouraged me to take those two messages out to my bigger group. And I'll do it, I've already tried to do it in a book, and hopefully in some new articles that are coming out and lectures, but maybe the most successful way we do that is in our conversations at, at meetings um, and with friends uh, on the peripheries of meetings. Um, so it's, it's a very hopeful time in a lot of ways, and um, I'm grateful for the experience at CTI for this sense of optimism that I've developed. Your passion for international law has very much informed and shaped our conversations. What's at the heart of that, that passion for international law for you as, as an individual? How has your life led to this, this commitment? notice you never asked me that before, so I, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, I understood very early in my childhood, growing up as a Catholic, that Christ called on each of us to be peacemakers. And it seemed to me in a world, uh, my world was very much influenced by the Vietnam War, that um, the way I could be a peacemaker was through international law, which has as its most important tenant peace and the non-use of force and the rest of international law works as a support for that central message. It was only later that I found out that I actually had to not talk about my, the religious motivations for becoming an international lawyer in doing international law. Of course that was, uh, well, it's good that I've been able to also overcome that particular um, advice from, from others. 
So being a senior member of this working group has been a kind of coming home to the child who wanted to be a peacemaker. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, it's, it's, many of us reflect in our group about how being at CTI has, and in this group, has given us a sense of coming home, a sense of empowerment, and returning to those kinds of exciting visions of how one could be as an adult and say, now maybe we can actually have those dreams fulfilled um, has been you know, almost difficult to put into words, but extremely empowering, very exciting, um, uplifting, and definitely energizing. I have to, I, I think it's true to say that I've accomplished more writing since I started meeting with this group. I, I, I'll say it's a combination of things. Our group is energizing. It opens new vistas, and we've solved problems that I think several of us have encountered in our scholarship. That's certainly true of me. I needed to understand more about the natural law that several of my colleagues in the group have worked on, and that has helped me solve problems that were blocking the publication of my book. So that was a definite thing, but there's also the world we live in, the particular challenge of the torture scandal needed a constructive response. And coming together, this group working on that really concrete problem has been, um, yes, the, the um, coming more fully into a sense of vocation that I've had for a long time. Mary Ellen McConnell, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Will.